so I wanted to, I just figured I'd make a, a deeper video about some of the combinations in, uh, or some of the patterns and connections you can see in Pascal's triangle. And, and one that, that a lot of people use, and this is something that'll help you when you move on to Algebra 2 or, or pre-calculus or calculus, is it lets you expand out things when you raise them to a power. In fact, somebody, uh, some people get afraid of the term, the binomial theorem, and I just tell them to just use Pascal's triangle instead. So I'll just show you what I mean here. When you get up into other algebra classes, you're going to have to expand things out like this, x plus y squared. And what that means is x plus y multiplied by itself. You know, an exponent just tells you how many times the base is being multiplied. So if I do x plus y times x plus y, I need to make sure to distribute the x to both things. And so that gives me x squared plus xy. But I also need to make sure to distribute the y to both pieces. So plus yx plus y squared. And then if you notice, these are like terms. xy is the same as yx. So I get x squared plus 2xy, or I could have written 2yx plus y squared. Now it gets even, I mean, that, that was a little bit of work, but it gets even harder and a little bit more tedious, really, if you try to do x plus y to the third power. Because now I've got to do x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. And this is just kind of getting a little bit tedious. We start with the same thing that we did before, giving us x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And then we take that and distribute it out to x plus y. So this is going to be a little bit annoying, but just stick with me. x squared times x, x squared times y. So x cubed plus x squared y. And then we do 2xy times x, 2xy times y. So that's 2x squared y plus 2xy squared. Then last but not least, we do y squared times x and y squared times y. So that's y squared x plus y squared times y, which is y cubed. Then if you notice, this thing and this thing are like terms because they both have x squared times y. Similarly, this and this are like terms because they have x times y squared. So it simplifies down to be x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. Now I know none of you want to watch me multiply out x plus y to the fourth power. Never, you know, gosh, even if I, I mean, it's nobody in the world would want to watch me multiply out x plus y to the 10th power, for example. That would be too much, too much for anybody to sit through. So what you can do instead is use Pascal's triangle and notice that we have 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. I want you to notice that the coefficients in front of the terms here match up with Pascal's triangle. So when I look at 1, 2, 1, those are the coefficients of x plus y to the second power. When I look at 1, 3, 3, 1, those are the coefficients of x plus y to the third power. And so without even writing out and doing all the distributive property, I can take x plus y to the fourth power and just follow 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So it's 1x to the fourth plus 4x cubed y plus 6x squared y squared plus 4xy cubed plus y to the fourth. My exponents on the x and the y are just counting down by one and up by one. So the exponents always add up to four for the fourth power. And the coefficients, I just go from left to right in Pascal's triangle. And so uh, that is a nice shortcut. It's a lot easier and less tedious than actually doing all the distributive property. What I want you to think about is why does it work? Why does it work? And it works because when we're building Pascal's triangle, we're just adding the numbers from the previous row. We're just combining the like terms to each other. You're just distributing 
from one thing to the next. One nice connection with this is that you can actually use this to figure out things like if I wanted to, for some reason, know what 11 to the fourth power is. You might not see the connection immediately, but 11 to the fourth power could be written like this. 10 plus 1 to the fourth power. And so I'm going to follow my little formula here, or follow my coefficients of Pascal's triangle here, and just write it like this. 10 to the fourth plus 4 times 10 cubed times 1 plus 6 times 10 squared times 1 squared plus 4 times 10 times 1 cubed plus 1 to the fourth. Now I wrote out all the ones. In my head I know that 1 raised to any power is just 1. And so this just becomes the number 10 to the fourth is just 1 with four zeros. 10 to the third is 1 with three zeros. 10 squared is 100, so 1 with two zeros. 10 is 1 with one zero, and 1 is just 1. And so we end up with the number 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, which is just the coefficients of Pascal's triangle. It gets a little bit trickier as you continue to move down Pascal's triangle because my next row, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. My next row, you kind of have to carry the place value over because you can't have a 10 from your triangle in there. And so you carry the 1 over to the next, carry the 1 over to the next. And so you get 1, 6, uh, yeah, 1, 6, 1, uh, 5, 0, 5, 1. So anyway, it, it gets a little bit trickier as you move down the rows, but the idea is that you're really just using this expansion as you go. There's one other nice connection with it, which I'll just show you really briefly, which is imagine that you're trying to walk downtown or somewhere where the streets are on a grid from point A to point B. And so if you're walking on a block, you, you have to go either you know east or north. And I want you to think about how many different routes can I take to get to each point. So if I wanted to get from the beginning to this point, there's only one route. I go that way. And if I wanted to go straight up, there's only one route this way. I'm assuming, of course, you're not going to like go completely out of your way. There's only one direct route to that point. But now I want you to think about how many different routes are there to get to this point right there. Well, there's two routes. I could go here and then here, or I could go here and then here. So there's two routes right there. So this was a one route, one route, two routes to get to that point. Think about how many routes, direct routes, there are to get here. Well, there's really only one route. This is another number, another location that has a route number of one. Similarly, for going two steps to the north, there's only one direct route to there. But as soon as I look at the other points, like trying to get to this point here, there's actually three different routes to get to that value. I can go two steps north and one step east. I can go north, east, north, or east, north, north. That's three routes. And I get three routes because I added the route numbers of the two points that are directly next to it. And same thing. I can get to this point over here in three different ways. And so as you continue to build this grid and figure out all the route numbers for how you can get to places, you'll notice it's just Pascal's triangle again. There's one, one route number, four route numbers there, four route numbers, or sorry, not four. There's six route numbers to get to right there because there's three ways to get here plus three more ways to get there. Makes six total routes to get to this point. And 6 plus 4 makes 10. And what you can do to figure out how many different routes there are is just construct your Pascal's triangle. Construct it out. And notice that to get from A to B, 
has a slope of going up to and over 3, and that that is the same as this entry right here, the third entry in row 5. The third entry in row 5. Third entry, row 5. And in fact, you can do the same thing to find out the route number of any of the points right there. For example, this point right next to it here, if I look at the M to get there, it's an M of 2 over 2. So I look at the second entry in row 4. You add your numerator and denominator, and you look at the denominator entry of that row. Right? And so you could use this to figure out the number of routes to get from one place to another place on a grid. And it all just comes back to Pascal's triangle. All connects back to expanding out the powers of 11. It all comes back to expanding out x plus y to the nth power. And there are even more applications of this beautiful pattern there. So I hope you learned a little bit. Please ask more questions. There's a lot more that I could show you about this beautiful uh, mathematical object.